Major advances in climate science have provided us with the clearest picture yet of how the Earth's climate functions and how human activities affect it. It is now an undisputable fact that human influence has warmed the atmosphere, ocean, frozen parts of our planet and land. The scales and rates of recent changes are unprecedented over thousands of years. Changes in the climate can be seen and felt everywhere in the world. Since our previous report in 2013, um, there have been major science advances worldwide uh, from observations, from understanding of processes in the climate system, uh, from global and regional modeling and, and from insights from past climates. So we have a much clearer picture of how the climate system works, uh, what has changed in the past, what's changing now and the possible climate futures. This report tells us that changes in climate are rapid, widespread and intensifying and that humans are the main cause of these changes. Understanding these changes and the consequences of future emissions will help governments and the communities to make decisions and take actions. To measure how the climate is changing, scientists have looked at key indicators. The average temperature of the Earth's surface over the last decade is 1.1 degrees Celsius higher compared with the late 19th century. Each of the last four decades has been successively the warmest on record since 1850. Levels of gases that trap heat in our atmosphere continue to increase rapidly. Current carbon dioxide levels are now the highest in at least two million years. They result from burning fossil fuels and deforestation. Scientists have observed a global retreat of glaciers that is unprecedented in at least the last few thousand years. And this warming has far-reaching consequences everywhere, including more hot extremes, heavy rainfalls, droughts and fire weather. The ocean is undergoing multiple changes, including warming, more marine heat waves, rapid Arctic sea ice retreat, acidification and loss of oxygen. And the sea level is rising at an increasing rate. Sea level rise will affect coastal communities, coastal cities and low-lying islands. In particular, these areas will experience more frequent coastal flooding events in the future. Sea level rise is very slow to adapt to any reductions in emissions. So sea level rise we, we experience this century will effectively be irreversible for many centuries to come. This report was the first IPCC report to assess low likelihood high impact outcomes. So for example, when we assessed future projections of sea level rise, we considered the possibility of large loss of ice from the Antarctic ice sheet, which would lead to many metres of sea level rise over the next few centuries. One of the main advances of this report is that we are now able to connect human emissions with climate and weather extreme events across the globe. In particular, the new science of event attribution is able to identify the role of climate change, altering the probability and the magnitude of some extreme events. Uh, for instance, we now understand that every heat wave occurring today is more likely and more intense due to climate change. And that is something that we didn't know before, and this report brings it very, very clearly. Almost a third of the report is dedicated to regional climate changes and provides new regional information that can inform decision-making at every level. Compared to the previous assessment reports of the IPCC, this report uh, has a much more granular regional scale assessment of how climate change will affect various parts of the world. And so how we did this here was by employing um, 
drivers of impacts that are of climatic origin. Some examples are mean temperature, extreme precipitation, droughts, tropical cyclones, coastal flooding, like that. So what our assessment shows is that uh, almost every inhabited region in the world is already affected by climate change and that with every additional fraction of warming that more and more regions will start feeling the effects of climate change uh, in multiple ways. One of the main messages coming from this report uh, relates to changes in climatic impact drivers which include extreme events at the regional level. And the results from this report shows that the increases in global warming levels from 1.5 degrees to 2 degrees Celsius or more, uh, we will experience more frequent droughts and more intense and heavy precipitation events. And these events are going to be felt in more regions of the world. And uh, it's at the regional level that this information is important uh, in order to develop adaptation and policy responses in various sectors. One of the big science advances in this report is the improvement made in the estimation of climate sensitivity, which measures how the climate system responds to emissions of greenhouse gases. For the first time in the IPCC report, we provide a comprehensive assessment of future changes in global surface temperature, ocean warming, and sea level. In this report, we have explored a wide range of scenarios where emissions of greenhouse gases decline rapidly, remain close to current levels, or continue to increase. In all cases, future greenhouse emissions will drive more warming in the next decades. We show that a level of global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius will be reached in the next 20 years. If emissions remain near today's levels, during a few decades, a level of global warming of 2 degrees Celsius would be reached and surpassed by around 2050. This can be avoided and warming can be limited to well below 2 degrees Celsius by immediate large-scale reductions in emissions of greenhouse gases. This report reaffirms the very important finding that every emission of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere adds to global warming. This warming is irreversible for many centuries, if not longer. This implies that stabilizing global warming requires emissions of carbon dioxide to reach net zero. Whether we can stop further warming or not is in our hands. Limiting further warming requires immediate, rapid, and sustain the reduction in carbon dioxide, methane, and other greenhouse gas emissions. This would not only reduce the consequences of global warming, but also improve air quality. The climate we experience in the future depends on the decisions we're making now. What we want from this report is to have climate science information broadly available. We have synthesis of regional information, we have frequently asked questions, an interactive atlas, so that the information is easily accessible to inform decisions.